What's up everybody, my name is Cap the Everyday Gamer, and tomorrow, August 1st, you're going to get a very large update for Minecraft. Not file size, but just the number of crap being added to the game. It's going to take it to version 1.3.1, as you can see here in the screen. So, as typical, when a major update comes out, I'd like to come out with a video, let you guys know some of the major changes, some of the additions to the game, and some of the things that have been added to it. Now, keep in mind that there are a crap ton of things they've added and changed and fixed in this game, so I'm not going to go through them all. Um, I'll put a link to the change log in the video description, but I'm just going to kind of show you a couple of the really interesting things that I think could be a big game changer, so just kind of stick with me if you would. From the main options area, you can see now you have this little option called Snooper Settings. And what that does is it allows Mojang and company to collect machine data and send it back on through this large cloud data thing so they can kind of get an estimate as to kind of the things people are running on their systems just to you know, help them improve performance. Also, you can go in and you can change chat settings now for multiplayer. You can make it different colors or opacity or whatever. And now there's something that added if for single player now works in multiplayer style engine here. What that means is that you can have your friends connect to your single player game while you're actually playing. And it'll allow them to just jump in and out as long as you're on the same land. So it runs on the single player game, now it runs on the multiplayer engine there. So that's kind of cool. Also, some changes have been put in for how you can create new worlds. So if you go in, you can still set it hardcore creative. Now when you go in, you can do um, super flat or normal, or you can do large biome types. You can also do allow cheats on for single player, so you can do game modes, and you can do a bonus chest too. What the bonus chest does is when you jump into creative mode, or I guess any mode really for that matter, once you finally get in, you'll see that you know you're wandering around doing your own thing and then you turn around and you know ta-da there's a chest there with some goodies and it kinda gets you started off so that's kind of a cool thing just a few new features for creating a new world once in creative mode you'll notice that they've also updated the inventory screen now so it's a lot more easy to find stuff and be able to search for items and it seems a little bit more classified than or not really classified but uh, categorized than just one big cluster of random objects there so it makes it a lot easier to try and figure out what you're looking for and just makes it easier to find so I really like the change as many of you may know or may not know a new ore has been added to the game that's actually a tad bit more rare to find than diamonds called emerald you can see this is what it looks like similar to the diamond style texture except for it's got the nice bright green emerald look to it so and this is what the actual ore looks like and once you mine the ore you get these little emeralds right here it looks just like the diamonds of course but green and one another major thing they added to the game now that with this ore and these emeralds here and the only thing they're really useful for right now is you can now trade with villagers you know you wander into an npc village you walk up to him right click it and you can see that like here he'll take an iron pickaxe plus four emeralds and you'll get an enchanted pickaxe or him he'll give you an enchanted axe with some different things on there and and you know some of them give you the opportunity to try and buy emeralds there so you know you give one emerald there and gives you six apples if you wanted to and then there's some of them where you can like give some you know wool away and I think like this guy right here let me check on him yes yeah, so he can give 20 pieces of wool and he'll actually give you an emerald so if you can't find them you can kind of buy them pretty sweet now this is something they added I think is really cool it's called an emerald chest you need an eye of ender right in the middle and then you need obsidian you surround it all the way around like this and you'll see it gives you an ender chest now what's different about an ender chest between this and like a regular chest as you'll see right here so you take your ender chest you set it down here throw all the random junk in there that you could possibly want to save like you would a normal chest so you know you don't want to lose it if you die but now what you can do is you can leave that there, take your inner chest with you, and place it somewhere else, and when you open it up, ta-da, all your stuff's there. Kind of like the old Resident Evil style save room with little chests in there. It's pretty cool. Now, tripwires are something really cool they've added here. Now, there's, you know, the things you could possibly do with them are uh, kind of leave it up to your own imagination. But this is how you make a tripwire hook. And you got to have one on each side, obviously, to be able to use it. But that's how you actually craft it. And I'll show you how to go ahead and connect it and what it can do now. So once you have your two tripwire hooks, you set them across from each other, just on a wall, and they can go up to 40 blocks across. Now once you actually have them in place, you have to connect them via string, which you can barely see on the ground here, but if you look real close, you can see it's still down in there, just a little bit. And once they're actually tripped and they're connected, that's all you have to do. And when any time you or a mob tramples over the top of them, you'll see them kind of activate here. 
Now to show what I mean, I go ahead and put a redstone torch on top of it. And now when I wander over the top of either one of them, you see, click, it turns it off. Get off and it turns it back on again. Pretty cool the stuff you could do with that, I bet. For all the people out there that like to create adventure maps, this is something that's been wanted to be done for a long time. Take a book, ink sack, and a feather, and blam, you got a book and quill. Now you can actually write in a book. I think you can go up to 50 lines in one book, and just type out whatever you want to, hit return to get to the next line, and you know you basically leave your message there for this so these uh, adventure maps people like to make instead of just having to put signs everywhere you can now t put a book in there and then once you're actually done with it you can go down and sign it and sign your little name on there and tells everything you want to about the book or however you want to sign it with your signature and then it can't be changed once it's closed it can't be edited so that's pretty cool that's going to be pretty awesome to see what people can come up with on that one might be a minor thing, but still, when you hit F3, now you get a little bit more detailed screen as far as like your XY position. It's been narrowed down to like four digits, and you also get your feet and eye position instead of just total distance. And they kind of clean it up to look a little bit better. So as I was saying, 1.3.1 comes with a lot of changes. These are just a few of the, you know, many, many things have been added to the game to make it a lot more fun to play. The number of stuff they're fixing in multiplayer is vast, and they're preparing for a lot more things they're really looking forward to. Like 1.4, I know they're really hoping to get in some bucket support for doing, like, mod APIs and things like that. But for now, this is a pretty good start. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can come up with on this. You know, hopefully you guys will, you know, show me your creativity and, you know, Let's see what we can come up with these trip wires and redstone traps and I can I can already see some pretty cool mob traps with that. It's gonna be awesome. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, let me know what you think, leave some comments below. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button just so I know. Uh, in the meantime, you guys have a great one. Take it easy, and I will talk to you later.